Hi everyone, hope you're doing really really well and keeping healthy, eating good and keeping safe. So I'm back here with another video of um, a healthy eating class. So um, let, me guess, let me see if you can guess what I'm going to be making today or teaching you how to make today. Um, can you? We've got kidney beans, we've got some uh, vegetables, uh, we've got chopped tomatoes. Well, if you can't guess, then today we're going to be making a chili con carne. Um, if you don't know what chili con carne is, then a traditional chili con carne is made out of kidney beans and beef. It's like a, it's like a stew made of kidney beans and and beef. But obviously, we're going to be doing a little twist and making this a chili veggie. So it's going to be a combination of vegetables replacing. Um, the beef or any kind of mince that you would normally use uh, with kidney beans and you know um, uh, cooked in a nice stew of soup and um, a vegetable stock. So here I have here a tin of red kidney beans, a tin of chopped tomatoes, two onions, a courgette, two carrots, um, sweet potato, a lime and a chili of course, well these are, this is called a chili con carne and it can't be cooked without uh, chilies and a garlic. And I've got some spices here. I've got some salt, some cumin seeds, um, dry coriander powder, chili powder, and uh, sorry, black pepper, and a vegetable stock cube. Um, now, just in case you uh, forgotten, I am going to put you uh, all the ingredients in the description box below. Um, right, so. With the chili con carne, the reason why it's so uh, easy to make is because everyone seems to have kidney beans lying around somewhere in the cupboards. If you don't have kidney beans, you could replace this with chickpeas uh, or even peas or any kind of beans that you have or even sweet corn. But a traditional chili con carne goes with kidney beans. And I think the combination of, you know, tomato, veggie kind of stew with, with chilies, it goes really, really well with kidney beans. And kidney beans are really full and packed with proteins. You have a choice, you can use either tin kidney beans or fresh kidney beans, entirely up to you. And when it comes to the veggies, really you can put any veggies you like uh, in your in your veggie con carne. I'm going to be um, using courgettes and carrots. You want to have a combination of some hard vegetables and some soft vegetables. So like these are, courgettes are kind of water-based, uh, it's like a water-based vegetable and so is sweet potato. Carrots are a little bit hard and they'll add a bit of crunch in it too. So I'm going to start chopping everything now and um, showing you um, how to make it. It's just so, so, so simple. And um, right, we're going to start off with the onions. So I'm going to dice the onions. Sorry about that. Right, so let me just put all these veggies on the side. And again, with the chilies, you can use the chilies according to your own taste. If they don't have to be green chilies, it can be red chilies. If you don't have fresh chilies, you can even use chili flakes or chili powder. Just, just more of it. Entirely up to you. Just remember that the whole point of making a chili con carne is to add a bit of that heat with your um, kidney beans. Right. It's a traditional British um, dish. So, you know, it's really, really nice. And, and once we've made this, I'll show you what you can serve it with. So I'm just going to give these a rough dice. You don't need to worry about the shape or size of the onions because they're going to be really like soaked and cooked in the stew uh, to a point where um, they're going to shrink and dissolve um, in the stock at, at one point. I hope you guys enjoyed the last recipe, um, the sweet potato, chickpea and um, spinach kebabs. Right, so you can, you can cut them in slices or you can even dice them, entirely up to you. But just make sure that they, uh, they're fine. Right. Meanwhile, I'm just going to put my pan on which I'm going to cook the chili con carne and I'll, I'll move the camera in a bit to the pan so I can show you how they're cooking. Right, that's fine. I'm just going to, some of them I'm just going to cut them in, in um, dice. Some of them I'm just going to leave them as they are. I'm not really bothered and you don't need to bother about um, how you cut them. Right. Okay. Okay. And while I'm doing 
getting while the onions are slightly sweating in the I've just put two tablespoons of olive oil while, I, while that's cooking I'm just going to do some um, garlic cloves I want them to cook with the onions right so we're just going to You've got a new knife here, I'm not used to this knife. Just in case you're wondering what's wrong with a knife skills. You can hear the onion now. Onion starting to sizzle in the pan. Right. And when it comes to the vegetables, I'm going to do the carrots first because the carrots are a bit hard and they're going to probably going to take a bit more time um, to soften. And, and to be honest, I don't want them really, really soft. I want them to stay, have a little, you know, keep a little bit of a crunch in them. So I'm just going to not really finely cut the um, garlic, just roughly cut them. Because again, these are going to um, cook well, soften and reduce in size with the onions. Right, so I'm just going to show you the onions. So two tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm just going to put the onions until they get slightly brown. I'm not going to wait them to get too brown, not like a curry, just to get slightly soft and slightly changing colour. Meanwhile, we're going to get back to the vegetables. Right, so we're back with the carrots. I'm going to do the carrots now. Like I mentioned in all my videos and all my classes, I'm not going to peel the carrots. Okay, you don't need to peel the carrots. So, now, carrots are the one vegetables that I don't like to cut because I just oh, they just take so much time and energy but anyway so I'm just gonna cut them in reasonable sizes I was watching a cooking show and um, the chef was saying that so many people they buy they spend extra money to buy um, pre-cut carrots and actually those pre-cut pre -cut carrots that you buy in supermarkets in the fresh food aisle in the fresh fruit, uh, fruit and vegetable aisle they've been pre-cut and frozen for a good week before they are put out on the shelves so by the time they're put out on the shelves they kind of lose all their um, benefits health benefits and all their goodness all you've got is a texture and the orange color kind of looking vegetable with not much goodness left in it so if you can try I know it's a bit of an effort, and if you have not poor knife skills like I do, unfortunately because of this new knife, then uh, it does take a bit of a... But it, you know, it's all, it's all worth it. It's all worth it. Right, so... Two. Should have pre-cut these in my chopper would have been a lot more ladylike but um yeah so almost done there right in goes the carrots to cook with the onions and again i'll bring you to the camera in just in a few minutes meanwhile i'm going to do our sweet potato cut our sweet potato because the sweet potato needs um if anything more time than the carrots to cook and again i'm not going to peel the sweet potato I did in my last one uh, when we were making the kebabs only because I didn't want the kebab the skin to come um, in between the the texture but here we don't need to worry because these sweet potatoes are going to be uh, cooking in the stew for a while and in fact the skin here is just going to give it a very the one to actually understand where and where not to take off the skin um, regarding the the taste and the texture you'll get an idea right so There we go. And in goes the sweet potato. Yes. 
All right, so here as you can see, the vegetables are really nicely cooking and we're going to let them just slowly cook in here and in the mixture while we cut the rest of our vegetables. All right, so the carrots and the sweet potato and onions have been cooking for a, a good um, 10 minutes now. And um, before I add in the courgettes, I'm going to add in the spices and just let all the spices kind of coat um, the carrots and sweet potato and onions. Give that a good stir. And this pan here, I've got some rice steaming. Just show you that. Some rice steaming to go along with our chili con carne. Right, so I'm going to give that a good stir to give it a good mix. Alright, and before I put the heat back on, I'm going to add in a tin of chopped tomatoes. So these are as designed chopped tomatoes. You can use any chopped tomatoes if you like. And at the same time, I'm going to add in the kidney beans. Now I have washed and rinsed these kidney beans only because I wanted to remove all the excess water and the salt and the starch and add the kidney beans. And the reason why I'm adding the kidney beans now because although they're already boiled and um, pre-packed in a tin, they still need a bit of time to cook. So um, we're going to give them the same amount of time to cook as the carrots and sweet potato and that way they're going to come really really nice and soft. And then once this gets a bubble and I know it's in full heat, I'm going to put the lid back on for another, um, a further 10 minutes. Right, so this has been boiling and I'm going to put the lid back on and lower the heat and let this simmer for a, for a further five, five minutes. Right, now we're going to do the courgettes. Um, like I said, you can use any vegetables that you have at home. You can even use spinach. Um, sweet corn peas. I just happened I went shopping yesterday and I was able to buy some courgettes um, Like I mentioned last week as well. It's been a bit of a nightmare getting hold of um, Just general everyday um, groceries unless you go to the big supermarkets, but I'm avoiding going to the supermarket um, Due to the risks and the rush and the time So I'm gonna cut the courgettes. The courgettes are not gonna need more than about five minutes once they're in the pan and of course if you put them in earlier then they're going to get very um, mushy and soft and lose their taste and texture and you don't want that. Oh that was done a bit. Yep. And with all these recipes that I'm, I'm showing you, um, when you make them you can put them in smaller pots and freeze them if you like as well for a rainy day. Uh, with a time like this, you know, it, it's probably a good idea that if you have made a bigger quantity than you normally would, then to put them into small freezable uh, boxes um, and and freeze them. There could be a day when you're just really not up for it, you're not up for cooking. Um, but rather than going and, you know, having a takeaway or, you know, a packet of instant noodles or something that's unhealthy and not nutritious enough, at least you can, you know, jump to the freezer and grab something that you made fresh and you know it's packed with flavour and um, packed with goodness and just defrost it and, and have that for a rainy day. So we're going to put the courgettes on the side and uh, wait for a further, I think we're going to wait for a total uh, another 10 minutes. And then I'm going to do the chilies. Now it's entirely up to you at what point you want to add your chilies. If you add your chilies um, early on, then uh, it's going to be you know it's going to be a slow releasing um, time of um, your chili. So it's going to take time to release the chilies, and the more the more longer the chilies are going to be in the pan, the more stronger the flavour is. I don't want the sh the, the flavour. Um, of my chilies to be that strong. That's why I'm going to add two. Otherwise, I'd usually recommend that you add one. But I'm going to add two because I would rather have a crunch and like a burst of chili flavor when we bite into it. So I'm going to add half of these chilies in now, and I'm going to add half of these chilies in um, towards the end uh, of the chili con carne, just to add a bit of a crunch. So I'm going to take you back to the pan just to show you how the pan's looking so far. So this is looking amazing and it smells amazing, I cannot tell you how amazing it smells. 
I think I forgot to chop that carrot, but it doesn't matter. And can you see how beautiful it looks? The carrot, sweet potato and kidney beans complement each other so beautifully. You know, sometimes when I'm cooking this kind of food, I just spend more time admiring the colours and the flavours than the actual <laughs> dish itself. Right. right, I'm going to add in the courgettes and add in half of the chilies. And at this point, I'm going to give this a little mix. Look how beautiful that looks. Now we're going to add in the stock cube and some boiling hot water. And again, don't worry about the quantities. That's all going to be in the description box. So I'm going to add in one vegetable stock cube. If you're not a vegetarian, you can add in a chicken stock cube or um, a uh, beef stock cube. Entirely up to you. But because this is a vegetarian dish and the whole purpose of it is to be meat free, it makes sense to add in a vegetable stock cube. Enough water just to cover all the veggies. And it's just going to pop up the heat. Wait for it, wait for a boil. Once you have a boil, give it a good mix, give it a good stir. And then put the lid back on and let this simmer for a further 15 minutes. So, now I'm going to put the lid back on and let this simmer for a good 15 minutes. Okay, so our konkani is almost done. And just to finish it off, I'm going to take out, squeeze out a juice of one lime and cut some coriander. So, one lime here, if you have a a lemon juice so that's really really good otherwise you can just do it by hand I'm going to just take out the whole of this juice because I'm going to need half of this for something else which is a bit of a surprise turn the fan off there because it's making a lot of noise. Take out all of your energy, all your anger, all your frustration of being in isolation. Right. Okay, look. Now put that on the side and we're going to chop some coriander. I like a lot of coriander, a lot of herbs um, in all my dishes and I think you all see that. Right. You can use basil, you can use um, parsley, anything you like. Uh, I was trying to get hold of parsley, couldn't get hold of any parsley, that was, that, that was my, my first preference. Right, so I'm going to leave it on the side and um, we're going to add that in the konkani once it's all done. I think it just needs a further one minute, hopefully. Um, right, so I said to you, I have a little surprise for you. So as you remember in the classes, sometimes I bring my, my big smoothie maker and blender. So we're going to be making a quick smoothie to go along with our chili konkani. And the smoothie is going to be made out of any fruits you like, really. The, the good thing about smoothies or mocktails, whatever you want to call them, depending on their consistency, is you can make them from any fruits or vegetables that you know that you have. And the reason why I say vegetables is because um, half of the smoothies that we buy from supermarkets have um, vegetables in them as well, which is really, really good and packed with flavour. It, it's just that the ones that we buy from supermarkets are triple the price than what we can make them at home. So I've got some orange juice that I had um, left in the fridge and it was um, reduced sugar. Um, pure orange juice. So I'm going to add in some mint leaves in here and some pear and again I'm not going to take off the the skin. Right, because the skin is what has all the benefits in it. Oops. Right, so I'm going to put the pear as it is. And this is just to go along with the kunkani just to give it a nice you know, uh, compliment. And I think kiwi and pear go really, really well. So again, you can use anything you like. In my last one, I, the last movie that we made yesterday, we put strawberries, apples, and um, 
uh, what was it? Spinach. It was so delicious. Now, some people don't take off the skin of the kiwi. I have to take off the skin of the kiwi, unfortunately. I don't like the texture of the, of the skin of the kiwi. I used to have a neighbour and she used to eat the skin of bananas, of mangoes, completely obsessed with them. I understand why as well, but I think that's just going to a bit of an extreme for me, um, eating the skin of a banana. But some people in some cultures they actually make a, a dish out, out of um, a skin banana. Right, so that's going to go in there. And I'm going to put this in my blender now. You've all seen what my blender looks like. Um, I bring it to the class. And this is just going to go on for about uh, 30 seconds. Right. I'm not going to bring my blender in because it's quite big and bulky, but you'll be able to hear it. Right, okay, smoothie's done. Looks so, so, so good. And this is going to go in my glass. Kiwis are really, really good for a source of vitamin C. Um, everybody thinks it's just oranges, but um, kiwi does just as good of a magic. Right, and I'm going to put a tiny bit of my lime. Lime again, very good anti uh, antioxidant. Mmm, that tastes delicious. And it's going to go so well with the chili con carne. You can have this any time of the day smoothies any time of the day just make sure anything that you do have have it in moderation not too much at one time so if you are going to have a smoothie um limit it to once a day unless you know that's your main meal um if it's your main meal then you can replace it with your um with your main meal um and add much more fruits and vegetables as many as you like right so we're going to put this on the side i'm going to put this in the fridge to chill while i show you the chili con carne which is almost done Okay, so our pinkani is finally done. Lovely, it looks delicious. And I'm gonna add the remaining coriander in here. And give it a nice mix. Not too much. I don't want to completely shrink and reduce the size of flavor. Right, sorry about that ladies. My video got cut off for some reason. So, um, this is gonna be a separate one, unfortunately. Unless I can somehow edit the video. Right, I'm gonna plate up now. As our chili con carne is done, so I boiled some rice and I'm gonna put the rice in the middle of the plate here. Just to give you an idea of how you can serve this con carne. Right. And like I said, this is a really delicious meal um, to have any time of the day for lunch, for dinner. Chili con carne. Oh, look at that. Look how delicious that looks. Now, a traditional chili con carne that's with beef, it would look a lot more red and a lot more like um, a, a tomato, um, tomato y based. That's because a uh, traditional ch chili con carne has a lot of um, tomato paste, but in this one, we've just simply added a tomato tin which is probably better because the tomato paste contains a lot of sugar. Uh, entirely up to you how you want to serve this. I'm again going to sprinkle some chilies on here and a dash of my lime juice that I squeeze out. I'm going to top this up with my favourite topping. Let me see if anyone can guess. With a dollop of yoghurt. Doesn't that look amazing? Right, that's your chili con carne done. And I'm going to serve this with our mocktail, which is now, now very nice and cool. So there we go. That's the recipe for today. And you know what? Just to give you guys a little idea of what it tastes like, I'm going to take one bite and tell you, with my sound effects, how delicious it is. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That is lovely. That is so 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 nice. Um, if you want, you can just put half of it, or you know, some of it in a in a glass container and store it in the fridge for a rainy day. Like I said, so 
I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully I will come back with another video next week and, um, and surprise you all. So until then, take care and see you next time. Bye bye.